Scooby-Doo. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Scooby mm -hmm. Yeah. We were on tab R3, Mayor. Wait. Which was previously tab F. F? It was previously tab F, now it's R3. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mayor, we had a motion made by Stereo. It was seconded by Lucy. What is it? The, mo the motion was simply to approve tab R3. This is the one that we were two to two on a minute ago and then we froze. Maybe we just pick up and let the councilman cast his vote or something? Yeah. 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 Would you like me to start roll call? <coughs> no, no, let him cast his vote. Oh, we can always table it. Council Councilman Bienname. <laughs> this is on tab R3. <laughs> We've used the tab F. It was previously tab F, F, now it's tab R3. And yeah. just to be clear, the motion is a motion to approve tab R3. How do you vote, sir? Yes. Item passes 3-2. Previously tab G, now tab R4. Proposed resolution of the mayor and city council of the city of North Miami, Florida. Approving a memorandum of understanding between the city of North Miami and the International okay. Union of Police Associations, AFL-CIO, local 6009, open parentheses, IUPA, close parentheses, for the bargaining unit consistent of the city's blue collar employees, authorizing the city manager to execute and to take all actions necessary to offer and implement a voluntary retirement incentive plan to eligible bargaining unit employees, providing for an effective date and for all other purposes. Public hearing is now open. Public hearing is closed. May I hear a motion, please? Motion. Come on, guys, let's go. Motion to. We have a motion to approve. Okay, discussion. Okay, Mr. Clerk, roll call. Councilwoman Steril? Yes. Vice Mayor Galvin? No. Mayor Thundro? Yes. Councilman Bienname? Yes. Councilwoman Keys? No. Item passes 3 2. Let's move it. Okay. Tab J. Previously tab J, now tab R5. Proposed resolution of the mayor and city council of the city of North Miami, Florida, allowing the city administration to exceed the maximum residential roofing program award amount per eligible household under the current city of North Miami Progress 2013 residential roofing program guidelines from $18,000 to 19304 $304 for extenuating circumstances in, a co in order to provide additional emergency assistance for one single family roofing project with issues that impact safety and quality of life, providing for an effective date and all other purposes. Public hearing is open. Yes, ma'am. Did you get bids for these roofing things? I mean, $18,000 seems to me a little high we're in construction. My name is Gabriella Carino. I live in San Susi. And I just want to know where the $18,000 ceiling came from. And I also, what are extenuating circumstances? Is that gutters, drains? What are they? That's my question. Thank you. Public like hearing is answers. now closed. Mr. The yes, question the resident just asked is pretty much the question that Council uh, Vice Mayor sure. Galvin has have asked when we were trying to uh, do the approved consent agenda. It has been answered by the city manager, but we can go ahead and answer your questions, ma'am. Sure. Uh, to the mayor. Um, 
this the roofing program is designed to target roofs that have extended damage so it's not only just the replacement of shingles these include um, um, other extenuating circumstances w there was a bid process uh, there was 10 contractors that responded uh, we were able to negotiate a ceiling of eighteen thousand dollars most of our roofs are coming in under eighteen thousand uh, there are some that we are quite aware of that have extensive damage that will exceed the eighteen thousand hence every item uh, every roof that extends that we bring it back to the council for approval to go beyond that ceiling let me ask you this is this a replacement roof or just um, patching the roof that's uh, for a new roof, right? This is for a new roof. Okay, all right. Brand new roof. Okay. And, and you have to replace the, um, the, the shingles. Uh, and in some cases, the, there's a lot of dry rotting. All of that has to be redone and restored. Thank you. Do you have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Mr. Clerk. Vice Mayor Galvin. Yes. Mayor Thundro. Yes. Councilman Bienname? Yes. Councilwoman Keyes? Yes. Councilwoman Sterile? Yes. Item passes 5 0. Thank you. Next. Okay, now I gotta go to my little box here. Okay, we're at the ordinance, and that is tab S. <coughs> In ordinance of the mayor and city council of the city of North Miami, Florida, amending chapter 2 of the city of North Miami Code of Ordinances to update, organize, and clarify specific sections of the chapter, including substantive, legal, stylistic, and organizational changes, while providing consistent use of terms and correction of Scrivener's error, errors, providing for conflicts, severability, codification, and an effective date. S is in Sam. That was tab S. Public hearing is open. Public hearing is now closed. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion. No discussion. We'll call Mr. City Clerk. Councilwoman Steril. Vice Mayor Galvin? No. Mayor Thundro? Yes. Councilman Bienname? Yes. Councilwoman Keys? Yes. Measure passes 4 1. Okay. We're on tab T, is in Tom. In ordinance of the mayor and city council of the city of North Miami, Florida, amending chapter 15 of the city of North Miami Code of Ordinances by creating an article 1 entitled Department of Personnel in accordance with and following amendments to the city charter and creating section 15-100 Retirement Incentive Program in article 3 entitled Claire T. Singleman Employees Retirement System, ordinance number 691 to establish a retirement incentive program for certain eligible members of the city, I'm sorry, of the retirement system, providing for conflicts, severability, codification, and an effective date. Public hearing is open. Public hearing is now closed. Do I have a motion? Do I have a motion? Move, move for discussion. And second for discussion. Questions? No question. Mr. Clerk. Uh, no, no, I've, I've, when you said questions, I didn't know if you were asking for our questions or who questions. All right. I want to be on the record as saying I don't think the city is going to be able to afford this. Our, fi our former finance director, in one of his last days on the job, sent an email expressing his concerns that we're going to be able to keep our pension plan solvent in the years going forward. I've heard from others who have background in city finance who share that sentiment. From my standpoint, I still don't feel comfortable with the number of employees that are going to leave us. I don't have enough information on who they are. 
what length of, of uh, time they have serving with our city. And we're a, it's, it's right now estimated that at least 50 of the eligible 111 regular staff members are going to leave. That number could certainly increase with an overall staff of 400 and something people to watch 50 or 75 people walk out the door. I don't like that. I don't think we're prepared for it financially. And I really think that this should be continued to allow us to have the opportunity to have workshops and other presentations, realizing the rest of the council may not feel the same way. I'll be voting against this because I don't think it's in the city's best financial interest long term. Thank you, Mr. Galvin. Any other questions? I'll make a comment. Um, I, w I would agree totally with uh, Councilman Galvin. Um, I think the loss of institutional knowledge will just cripple the city. Um, there's no way that we can just bring in new people at less money and think we're going to save money because the transition is just not going to be possible. We are losing our top employees with, with the knowledge. There is nobody to train the people. Right now, I feel the building department is in total disarray. Um, that's a department that I like to go to quite a bit in my profession and I have a lot of constituents and it seems like all of the complaints issues coming about uh, stem from the building department. I uh, just got an email today that the service hours uh, in the building department have been lessened again and that goes, um, that coincides with uh, Mr. Jackson's retirement um, with Ms. Calloway gone. Um, it, it's just really too much. Uh, Ms. Hager, you do a great job but I mean, I'm just not comfortable where the building department is, and we've got personnel leaving, and I, I, we're, we're going to cripple uh, our city with a lack of staff. Uh, to say that our customer service will be um, not affected just, just can't be. The other thing is I don't think we're going to be able to afford it. I think it's going to be a financial disaster. I'll put that on the record. Uh, we're looking at approximately $2 million a year for five years to fund this uh, early retirement program. I've had previous employees call me very concerned that we're going to break, break the bank and they're not going to be able to get paid on their pensions. And these are people who are knowledgeable. And yes, I was also made aware of our finance director who, before he retired, was touted as just a tremendous intel uh, great finance director. And he has um, made a statement against this. Now his credibility is not so great because he's left, but there's just no way uh, we should be doing this right now. Thank you. I have a comment. Mr. Bienimé. Madam Mayor, I don't think in the government we have key personnel. I will say in the government we have key position that need to be filled as quick as possible. The great city of North Miami is surrounded by six major universities. FIU, FMU, we have UM, we have Johnson & Wells, we have Berry University, we have St. Thomas University. The list goes on and on again. Thinking that it's hard to replace personnel in key government position is absurd. We are not living in a third world country. We are the United States of America and North Miami is a part of that country. Impact on service or services. I met with the city manager days ago about poor service that we provide our residents and businesses, such as utility bill, how long we have to wait for a business license. People are complaining about our code enforcement department, community planning, zoning and development, too many homes, businesses, apartments that need to be demolished When we are talking about service to residents, are we talking about the same 
same old, same old. Someone need to get something done, just call a friend. Or we're talking about servicing the residents of the great city of North Miami. I just learned that the city of North Miami is not in compliance with the county about demolish, the demolition of those junk property in the city of North Miami. When we're talking about personal, when we're talking about services, I don't know what kind of services are we talking about. I'm in favor of the plan because we are living in the United States of America and the city of North Miami is surrounded by at least six universities. Tell me that we cannot find people to fill positions. I don't think uh, it's fair to those thousands thousand of people getting uh, a diploma every day. And uh, so I'm in favor of the plan. And hopefully we can focus uh, our plan on real capital improvement. We cannot sit down every day talking about employees, talking about services. We need to move the city forward and talking about big money for capital improvement. I'm in favor of the plan. Madam Steril, any comments? Yeah, but I didn't have a speech. Come on, man, that was good. Let's Very move on. Thing. Let's move on. Um, uh, it's 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 very sudden. If I have to agree with uh, Commissioner Councilwoman Cal um, Keys and Councilman Scott Galvin, um, understanding that people will be losing their job. But I have sit with the city manager many, 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 many times, um, expressing my concern. But w from what I understand, it's something voluntarily. The, the program is there, but they have to choose it. My other concern, if we actually catered the program to fit a certain people and not including others that I have a problem with because we should be fair everyone that actually qualified should be part of the program and I'm hoping that I'm not hearing we are forcing people to take it or we're trying to push people out of the door because we have to understand that we're dealing with people's life we're dealing with family members that actually that's my husband saying that, <laughs> come home. No, that's not true. Um, so from what I understand when I sit down with the city manager sharing, expressing the concern that the council members have, it seems like they don't have to go if they don't want to. But if the, if the, sorry, if the plan is good for them, is work for them, I don't want to be the one that actually stop them from enjoying a good retirement. But however, I'm hoping that you already work, and I can't turn it off, sorry. You already work and sit down with some employees that feel that it's not working for them or we're trying to push them out of the door because that wouldn't be fair. Some people have put 20 years, 30 years out of their lives to the city of North Miami. I think that we should show them respect and support them if they're willing to leave. But if they're not willing to leave, they want to sit with us or to actually continue serving the city, I think we should provide them with the opportunity to continue to serve the city. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. So Mr. I Clerk, roll call, please. Vice Mayor Galvin. No. Mayor Dundro. Yes. Councilman Bienname. Yes. Councilwoman Keys. No. Councilwoman Steril. Yes. Item passes 3-2, tab U. In ordinance of the mayor and city council uh, of the city of North Miami, Florida, amending chapter 19 of the city of North Miami Code of Ordinances, entitled Utilities, specifically at Division 3 of Article 3, entitled Backflow Prevention, by amending Section 19-81, entitled Inspections, to allow the assessment of reasonable fees related to the costs incurred by the Public Works Department in, an, in the inspection, testing, 
and certification of backflow prevention devices to respective customers within the city's water service area in accordance with local government permitted requirements, the U.S. Safe Drinking Water Act of 1974, and the Florida Department of Environmental Protection, providing for conflicts, repeal, severability, codification, and an effective date. Um, public hearing is open. Public hearing is now closed. This is a discussion we've had before with, uh, regarding the backflow. Mr. City Manager? Yes. We're we supposed to be having the city because the residents were paying too much on the plumbing, calling a plumber. I remember that was one of the items as well that has been discussed during the Sans Souci uh, uh, um, Homeowners Association. Yes. Some of them are being charged between $80 to $150. So do we have, uh, yes, Madam Blaine, I think you do have, it. come, come. And I said public hearing was open. You didn't hear me because you were talking. Come forward, please. Come, 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 come. Well, you didn't stand up. Come. <laughs> I stood up. Honestly, I did. Go ahead. Esther Blinn, 1990, Northeast 118th Road. Uh, the, historically, this uh, inspection for backflow meters was absorbed by the city and was handled internally. There are various and sundry charges. There was a whole confusion about some kind of aqua flow list of approved vendors that was not really very open to approved vendors. And there are several that didn't even know that they should sign up. Uh, I think <coughs> there are anywhere from $75 to you're correct, uh, Madam Mayor, uh, to $150. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that the city should, not, should do the inspections. They have the staff, and if they don't, then they should hire staff to do the inspections. These inspections can be done relatively quickly, and you're talking about a small number of homes that require them. I think the backflow inspections for commercial buildings, I, I don't know how that works, so I can't comment on it. But for homeowners, this is in addition to the second meter, to the water base rate that's double, to the per 1,000 gallon charges, the $3.16 instead of the lowest charges. I ran across the city's advertising because our home was one of the last to install a second water meter. Think of the environment. This is We're not there yet, Mrs. Bin. We're talking about the bad, bad, no, 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 bad but flow. But I'm saying Don't mix them together because you okay. have plenty of opportunity to speak about the second water meter is coming as discussion. No, but Let's focus now so we can move on. But you don't have I just wanted to know okay, uh, the, 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 the price range the for the backflow. Back and I remember recommendation was made, I believe, by Councilwoman Keys to the city manager. Can you give us an update, please? To the mayor and all the council. Okay. I'm uh, finished, I think. Uh, yes, <laughs> our recommend, uh, the council wanted us to make a decision and come back with a proposal okay. for the backflow prevention. Okay. Uh, this is a regulatory requirement. We have to do this annually. By After the county, states? Uh, this is the state. By the states, okay. Correct. Correction. And so after um, evaluating it, uh, staff's recommendation is to hire uh, four individuals uh, for the purposes of inspections and certifications of the backflow devices okay at a charge that is listed on page three or four which is uh for two inches and above it would be 150 dollars uh -huh. for certification for three quarter inch up to one half inch it would be 75 dollars these fees are in conformity of what other agencies charge uh, to get these inspections certifications done. Okay, Mr. Manager, how many houses are we talking about? Um, well, 
more or less. More or less, we have how many backflow devices? It's residential and commercial. I can get Mr. Yeah. Ghani. Alim Ghani, Public Works Director. We have approximately 2,000 residential and 1,000 commercial industrial. And can we find, can, can we send out for bid and have a better price? This is... Uh, this 150 to 75 dollars. This is ridiculous. It this is pretty high. much what the residents have got on their own. Why should we go and get four, choose four of them when the price is going to be the same from what they're complaining? I thought we were going to come up with something, something affordable, something you know, because I remember at the beginning we talked about 25 dollars to 50 dollars. Now we're up to 150 dollars. Uh, Mr. Ghani can explain the prices um, as to how we came to that recommendation. Mr. Ghani? Okay. Um, again, the most of the backflows in our system that are, commu that are, that are uh, residential are from the three-quarter inch to the inch and a half. Uh, the city actually charged $25 to certify those backflows. The program was behind. We had two staff members doing it, and they could not keep up with the program. We were behind on the inspections and we were behind on You're the talking certifications. About two people for one year? Two people for one for year. For 2,000 homes? That's correct. How many they homes couldn't do it? How many do they do a day? Because it's a long process. It's Which long process? How long does it take to, to, to inspect a backflow device? It takes anywhere from 15 minutes to about an hour to inspect the device, depending on the size of the device. Oh. Oh. Okay. So 365 days, 365 days. No, no, no. So you have 200. About 700 days to do it. And they couldn't keep up. They could not. So why didn't we hire more people even on a part-time basis to continue the work? Because well, this is ridiculous. $150, this is, this is, this is uncalled for. Mayor, if I could. So part of the problem, and I think moving forward, we want, we want to keep this in mind. The problem okay. is that these prices have not changed since 1990. So when you don't update the ordinances and, and remain current with market rates, then you have this huge influx and people are like, why am I paying so much money? It's because since 1990, you've not increased your prices mm -hmm. to keep up with the market. Okay. So I think, you know, for future lesson, I think we need to make sure that we're current on what the market dictates for certain things so that when, th when the market requires a change in price, then the city is also changing in price so the residents don't feel the impact. Got you. M Mr. Ghani, can you explain just how you got to the prices? Okay, the prices were obtained with neighboring municipalities. We compared our cost and we compared it with all the other th the cities that we called around. Coral Gables is $75, North Miami Beach, $50, um, Surfside, $80 for the inspection. So we're well within the range or the average range. Also, if you look at the existing plumbing companies that do the inspections, they range from $75 to $150. We are within the average. So our recommendation was $75 based upon assessing other neighboring agencies of what they charge for the same inspection. So we are going to charge the residents $75? Is We're that what you're saying? Yes. This is for the inspection and the backflow device, um, whatever? Certification. Certification? Yes. Once a year. Once a year. But and that is what other agencies charge. Okay, so it would be $75. We, the city, are going to do it, and we charge them $75. That's correct. Okay, this is a proposition that we have to take up on, or do we let them decide if they want to go that route? Well, we're making a recommendation. Staff is making a recommendation. Okay, but excuse me. City Attorney, is it okay if I reopen public hearing again? Because I'm sure there are some of you who want to talk about it. Anyone who wants to speak about it now? Please, come forward. Maybe he has another connection where they can get it even less. We're looking for bargain here. I'm Kenneth Barrett. I live at 11605 North Bayshore Drive. Uh, I installed, or because there had not been an original uh, backflow uh, system put in when we had the uh, meter, second meter installed. And I would raise the question of how are you going to know, uh, you're going to offer a bounty for 
citizens to turn in neighbors who have uh, uh, irrigation systems because there are sure a lot of them that are not uh, recognizable and particularly if the uh, meters are in the alley people don't know whether the backflow preventers are installed. I paid $75 to have my system uh, inspected uh, in late uh, September and that was $55 to a plumber uh, from uh, Miami Beach and there was a 1995 charge for Aquaflow to in, uh, put it in. I moved here from uh, Austin, Texas six years ago and out there they also had uh, backflow preventers on hose bibs because the greatest danger, let's face it, the greatest danger in uh, backflow prevention is through hose waters. Now the gentleman tells me that uh, it, ICC, whatever that is, uh, exempts or grandfathers that backflow preventers. I would like to have you really, uh, you know, satisfy yourselves and the citizenry that those are not also subject to it. Or the city could make a requirement that is more uh, strict, I think, than what the ICC might require. So if that were the case, you have how many houses in uh, North Miami? Every one of them would be subject to it, perhaps. Now, he tells me that it's, it's subject to the date of uh, construction. So I'll, I'll, I'm not questioning your professional statement, but uh, it's another consideration. Okay. Now, just a point of clarification. The backflow devices are required. If you look at my staff report, since 1974, it's a regulatory requirement. Under our new codes, which is the new ICC building codes, you all new construction are required to have it. And what the gentleman referred to, it's the hose bibs on every single device or property, residential or commercial, must be equipped with that device. It's a cross-connection control device. Okay. And that's the law. Thank you. Susan Blumen, 1865 Northeast, 117th Road. Um, I would just like to be assured that this isn't another let's tack on an extra bag, let's tack on for an extra seat on the airplane and let's make a little extra money here and there. If this could just be a service that the city provided, um, I mean, I understand the city is a business and it has to run. I mean, just like all of us understand the city is a business. You have to provide for your employees. But if this, this right here, the backflow inspection and certification could be a service that was just an even wash that the city wasn't making money on and we paid for it. So I, I don't know if 75 um, is a little bit over. I mean, I, I guess in my head with what I know about plumbing, uh, I guess 50, 65 stuck in my head. Hmm. But if it could just be a service the city provided, we paid for it, we covered the expenses, we paid for the employees to do it, and it was done. And it was done properly, and it didn't go to some sham organization that was charging off the top, you know, $10 uh, um, uh, an inspection. Mm -hmm. I would be fine with that. I just want it done properly. I don't want to be ripped off with it. And I just think that it really should be um, uh, a function of the city because ultimately it's the city's water supply that is going to be affected if one of those backflows goes bad. Okay. Um, Mr. There's a the gentleman who just spoke earlier who changed his backflow device back in, um, in September. I think you folks should speak with him and, 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 and have him give you, is it mandatory that they use what we have to offer? Because there's a lack of trust I can feel like it's not a way that we're trying to make money on them. I think it should be on a volunteering basis. Those residents who, you know, who wants to use the cities, they can go ahead and do it. And those who would rather go other route, you know, give them the freedom to do so. Because I don't think we dare to um, put up on anybody, you know, the, 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 to force anyone to use what you guys have found for them. Is, that, is this mandatory for all city residents to go and use what you guys are offering? Uh, Mayor, the direction from the council was to evaluate whether it should be done in-house or have someone do it 
um, outside. Regulatory requirement. We are required by the city mm -hmm. to regulate it and have a record. I'm sorry, by the state and have have a record that it's been inspected and certified. It's our responsibility to provide that information to the state. There's two ways of doing it. We can do it internally or we can get someone on the outside to do it. Uh, to be manageable, it has to be one or the other. Okay. Oh, it doesn't have to be, it cannot be both. Because I remember when we suggested that the residents should go and look for a plumber themselves, Councilwoman Key suggested that the city take upon this responsibility to go and look for them. Now that we have found it, uh, there's still that lack of trust between residents and city that makes me very un at ease. I'm not at ease at all with the, with the comment that Ms. Bloom just made. She's hoping that it's not another way that the city is trying to make money off of them. So that's why I believe um, we should give them the opportunity as long as they can provide the certification, let them do it. I, uh, this is my recommendation. But wait, I have one more resident okay. to speak. Hi, A. Brudman, 1930 Northeast, 119th Road. Um, I've been a resident of North Miami for over 40 years. And from 1974 through maybe 2012, almost 2013, there was no, not one year did we ever pay for a certification backflow charge as a taxpayer. So what's going on here is there's a, a, a shifting of the cost burden from the city with all its millions of dollars to the taxpayer. That's what's going on here. Okay. This is not, not only about making money or not making money. This is about taking a, a, a financial burden that for the last 50 years or so has been borne by the city. And then this past year, it was just picked up and said, here, taxpayers, it's now all on you. And, and my concern is, is that why, why did this happen? Why is it that this burden was shifted to us? And aside from that is the logistical situation of having 3,000 different taxpayers have to make 3,000 different appointments with independent plumbers and start negotiating. You know, we have a life to live. And for the 40 years that I've been a resident here, I never had to do that. But this past year, all of a sudden, things changed. Okay, let me ask you this. Um, Mr. Manager and maybe, maybe Mr. Alim can answer this. Uh, for the past 40 years that the gentleman just mentioned that he had lived in the city, have we ever been required by the state or is it the first time the city is requiring for us to have certification on backflow devices? We've always been required by the state. Okay, who paid for it? Um, Mr. Ghana can explain that. I think. Who used to pay for it? Because now he's questioning. He has never paid for it once and now all of a sudden, 2013, they have to pay for it. He paid for it. According to the ordinance that you're ratifying or changing right now, he paid $25 to get the backflow inspected and certified. The city of North Miami's utilities charge $25. We are increasing that free from $25 to $75. Yes. That so is what you're voting on tonight. So it was never, okay, so when it used to be done, it was never a question of giving them the choice. It was put up on them without their knowledge that they were being, being paid for a certification of a backflow device, is that, is that what you're saying? The device was tested, if it passed, uh, it went out with your utility bill, and that the charge, the utility charge was on your bill that we charged. This, this, is, this is part of a bill that nobody understands. <laughs> I'm, I'm shocked to even learn that I was ever, ever charged, even one penny. So mm -hmm. the fact that $25 was buried in my charge all along the way is actually shocking to me. But it did say on the bill, backflow device charges. Backflow inspection. That's what inspection. it says. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. So now, do, I, do, we, do we have a motion so we can make a discussion? Or we did have the motion. Go ahead, Mr. Mr. No, we, don't have a motion. We, we, have we don't? No. We have a motion. We don't have a motion. We don't have a second. Second for discussion. We don't have a you motion. Make a motion. So. Nobody has made, has any, who made the motion, Mr. Clark? Tab you, we have she no motion. She d you need to open your mic, Councilwoman, and speak to it, because I, I people cannot hear you. Yeah. I, I, really, I made the motion? Okay, I made the motion. Okay. Yeah. 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 I just made the motion. I seconded. I, I made the motion. Okay, thank you. 
Okay. Now and let's open motion. discussion. For between Madam Mayor, I'm through you to staff, I'm also concerned that people with a second water meter are going to have to pay twice. Mm? For, the I, right, for the backflow certification? You're, you're going to have to have a backflow on your regular okay. meter and then a backflow on your second meter. Am I correct? No, sir. The back backflow devices are only required on irrigation meters right and commercials so if you've got a second sprinkler meter that's the irrigation meter right but you're not charging your bay uh your primary meter does not have a backflow Maybe only if you have an irrigation should. meter okay. the law requires that you have a backflow device so to be clear this this charge is only going to go on people with Second irrigation meters and who else? Commercial. And commercial. Correct. Now, you said a minute ago we have 2,000 uh, residential. We don't 2000. have 2,000, but we don't have 2,000 irrigation meters residentially, do we? I, th I got no, information. Okay, let me explain. We have, when we started the program, a lot of them were stolen. A lot of businesses lost their backflows, they were stolen. We started doing an inventory of the system. When we started, we had over 2,000. Now we're well over 3,000 and going. That is You're why I just said. You're confusing the bejesus out of me. Because staff, staff has given me a previous report that says yeah. irrigation meters, there are approximately 800 citywide. Residential. Residential. With another 50 or so commercial. I don't want to quote the exact number, but I believe we have a little over 2,000 and residential and 1,000 commercial. That's so out of line with what I've been yes. given previously. I mean, I in, held town hall meetings where I threw out. In the, the number. numbers that I have, I will I will confirm that. But I could I could come back to you on that. Would you all be willing to continue this another two weeks? Not a that, that to me is vital to to understand how many people yeah. are paying this. But uh, it doesn't make any difference whether or not it's two hundred or two thousand because it's something that needs to be done. It is required by the states. It's not exactly. like we are imposing it on them. It right. is a requirement. Well, but th this is what I'm confused at. Then they I'll wait till they're paying attention again. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody know the theme Ladies. of Jeopardy? Da, 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 da. Okay. The thing is, in the past, I, I just need to know. Are you, sure. are you saying the information I've gotten in the past from staff is false, that there are not 800? I mean, they even broke it down for me uh, by district. L let me, uh, I think what Mr. Ghani is telling me, that the number of backflow devices for residential units that we provided in the past it was specifically asked for San Susi and Keystone. How many people had uh, irrigation meters in those areas? That, that's not what I yeah. asked for. And if you want to give me about 20 seconds, I'll pull it up on the email. I got a district by district breakdown of how many second irrigation water meters there are. There were about 800 total, with 790 something of them being in districts one and two. So. That it, whether it's 800, 500, I'm now hearing 2,000 with 1,000. Like I, that, the, just the numbers are so out of skew. I, I'm confused. And does it matter? Do does it well, matter? It Do, does that change the fact that these people have to pay $75 for their inspection, or should we just let them go and maybe take the suggestion of the gentleman who did his in September? and let them call that same plumber to do the same work for them. It, I, matter, I, it matters to me mostly from the standpoint that I, I, I need to be able to hear staff's voice and trust what they're telling me. And if they're telling me one time there's 800 and now that there's 2,000, maybe 3,000, that's so, I just, now that's like, wow, wait, what do I believe? Am I voting a tax increase for 800 people or 3,000 people? I'd like to know. Clarification. Uh, I said 2,000 and 1,000, right? The numbers are correct, and I'll give you the numbers as reported in, in our rate study that was done a year and a half ago. All the sprinkler meters, we have a total of 119, 878, which is roughly 1,000 residential backflow devices. And the remainder, which is a little over 3,000 in our system, the 2,000 is on the commercial side. We have over 3,000 in our system, Councilman. So yes, 1,000 for, for residential and 2,000 A little over 1,000 residential and the remainder is commercial. Well, the number I received back in February is like 484. But from who? He's the, he's the public works director, if you get it from someone else. But he just changed his report 
within the same report. So now, what I, you know, I'm yeah, ready to vote. I'm ready to vote no, simply because I don't. I'm not getting a clear, straight answer from staff, and that's a big red flag to me. Vote no. So I'm ready to vote. I'm okay. ready to vote no. So the idea, Mr. Manager, but is I, to I remember, Mr. Manager, excuse me, uh, Madam Mayor, and a few months ago, the residents were complaining. They don't want now go and look for a plumbing company. They want the city to do it, and they will pay the fee. That was the question and answers about uh, three or three months ago, right? Yeah, through the, through the mayor councilman. The issue was this. Um, who was going to do the inspection? People did not want to pick up the phone exactly. and call a company to come out and do the certification, uh, the inspection, the certification. It was a big issue. What you asked us to do was to come back and do an analysis, that in particular the because the cry of the residents that came to the podium that mm -hmm. why can't we do it in-house? Mm -hmm. so and it wasn't a price issue it, at it, that time. The, no, it was exactly. not a price issue. The issue is. was, was who do we know? We have to call out someone to do the inspection, the certification, right. and then if it's broke, we got to call somebody else. Mr. So Manager. Can I, can I make a suggestion on this thing here? Yes. Is to let the resident go ahead and find their own plumber no. to do, he because we're going in no. circle now. <laughs> we are going in circle. And I think it's time for us to decide what we I want to do. I think some people need, need to take the responsibility. Well, it's, 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 it's a matter, it's a matter, because the, the, the gentleman who spoke earlier um, said that he paid Fifty dollars and fifty and nineteen dollars. Is that correct, sir? You did pay in September. Fifty-five and twenty. Yeah, about fifty-five. Okay, 25. which 75. gives you seventy-five dollars. Now, if the residents wants to go that route, I think we should let them go this route. We don't have to have the hassle. How many backflow? How many we have? How many residents? How many uh, commercials? They just have to call him. He'll give them the number. Because this I, is... May I interject, yeah. Mayor, for one second? It's the same $75, yeah. Mr. Sure. Mr. Manager. But it's it's you're, you're right, Mayor. However, keep in mind that the record keeping it to be the of backflow devices, the inspection, the certifications, is the responsibility of the city. Well, he's got it. You sure. do have your certification, sir. Then, is that correct? No, but we're going to have to chase 2,000 people for it. No, no, they have the responsibility to bring it to the city. No, but if they don't, the city, that's the city responsibility to provide it to the state. If they don't provide it to the city, we're going to have to hire someone to... to um, find then we find them. Thousand. We but find them because they know that they have... The idea, I believe, is to give them a certain time to bring in the certification to the city because I think right now we're just wasting time in terms of how many residential, how many commercial. This is irrelevant. Correct. He paid $75. We found a $75. Uh, $75. But shouldn't so should be 75 Excuse me? It shouldn't be 75, no. Mayor. Well, if you can find one for less, go for no, it. No, but you see, this is the problem. This is basically, this is basic oh economy. Goodness. If you're going to have, if you have 2,000 meters to service, and you're calling one plumber at a time to service this one, you're paying, of course, much more than instead of going to the city yeah. to go and say you're hiring one person, you know, to service all your meters at once. On top of it, you're going to eliminate the process let me, of let, me, no let me do a suggestion to you. Yeah. Um, there are two homeowners association, one in Keystone, three. Correct. Well, one in Keystone yeah. and one in Saint Souci. Yeah. Why don't we, f you folks, get together and call them? I believe there are about 400 and something in both um, 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 communities together. It oh, will give like about. 800 homes in Keystone. Now. We don't even need. No, you no, just no, you okay. have got the numbers on them. You have oh, 3,000 oh, gotcha. meters. The one with the second meters. Now There's now about 400. 3,000 to Because this, this was the. This, is, this was the original <coughs> suggestion made. And Councilwoman Keyes insisted that the city does that. We did it, and it's still not satisfactory. Councilwoman Keyes I believe that, 
No, it was you. No, but you insisted that I these four people. I haven't no, no, but before, no, three before, before ago, when it came I, three months ago, you insisted that That's these correct. four ladies cannot pick up the phone. They wouldn't know where to call. That's why I'd like we to need to do it for okay. them. Now that we did it for them, there's still a problem. I suggest, I suggest that both homeowners mm -hmm. gets together and together it's like 500 meters backflow devices. I suggest that you call some plumbers and have them give you a price for 500 and deal with it. And deal with it, sir, because but this is, because you know what, regardless what, there will still be people that are not satisfied with the come out. Mm -hmm. And there will no way, there will be no way, let me tell you, there will be no way that you folks are going to be satisfied because in the wait, back wait, of your wait, mind wait, somebody wait. is trying to get some money yeah. somewhere yes, sir. and it's sir. wrong mayor did you have in the past did you have a past in the past a problem from any of your residents from the uh, business and also from the rest of the community no. where somebody was claiming about the 25 dollars no you haven't it's no longer 25 dollars microphone you got to use the microphone you have to use the microphone it's Master. no longer 25 dollars sir the prices have gone up from, from 1940 to 2013. Sir, Mr. Manager, I'm directing you. I think we should let the resident go and find their plumber and then deal with it. Mr. Uh, Mayor Tondro, <laughs> but it, wanna do it, it is not <coughs> our, the city manager has said the, we're bypassing the issue. The city manager <coughs> clearly said, Mr. Ghani clearly said, it is not the resident's responsibility. It is the city's responsibility. But they're going to charge you $75 wait, and you wait, said, wait, 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 the cheapest, the cheapest <coughs> person who got the best deal bang for their buck still ended up paying 75 because guess what? The city charged $20. So you see, what I'm saying is, and since you said you wanted this aired completely and they intersect, the whole second meter issue intersects <coughs> with the backflow inspection. So what I'm saying is, <coughs> if it is in fact correct, what Mr. Ghani is saying, that the city, instead of charging $25, yes, we're not in World War II era, it's going to charge $75 and not, and not, this is what Susan Blumen said, not make a profit. We're happy to do that Amen. and pay it and put it on our water bill. I think that to for the council to sit there, the mayor and council, and hear from the city manager, it's our responsibility, city, it's our responsibility, and then foist that on the on the taxpayer is outrageous. I think Mrs. What Blin, Mrs. Is, Mrs. Blin. Yes. From what I'm hearing, the residents have always paid for it. No, but the city so did it. it. They charge you. They charge the residents. It's okay. Do we it. trust the city staff. Okay, so do you, you don't have any problem with the seventy-five dollars no. fee. No, no. What we're saying is, the we don't have, have any problem, problem with the city dollars. to pay, to do it in house and to report to the city manager that at seventy-five dollars, because of the inflation and increase in cost of living. Yeah. They are not making a profit because they didn't Very make good. a profit at 25. Okay. Okay. That's okay. all you. we're okay. saying. Thank all right. Okay. Can, Mayor are you speak? Speak? Can we have a motion? No, you're not issues. making any profit. Right? Mayor, I have not spoken. This is my issue. You have not let me say a word. You've let you have not talk. asked to speak. That's why everybody I've was been, having I've a discussion. Been talking, I've been Go asking ahead. and asking. Now you're out of line. Go ahead, ma'am. No, I'm not out of line. I get to speak. Are you going to speak or not? Otherwise, we move on. Oh, please. Okay, so go ahead. Go ahead. Um, first we're not of all, having a show I here tonight, trust me. Go ahead. I wanted to thank Mr. Ghani for doing this study because, yes, you're correct. I brought this up when we wanted to do the backflow, and we did not want the citizens to have to go find 800 or whatever independent contractors, and I requested that the city do this in-house. They've done this study, and I thank you. That being said, is that the best price we can get, Mr. Ghani? Um, actually, the prices I gave you were in-house. I just gave the city manager. We also got prices from private companies or private plumbing companies, and the city manager can give you the additional. What are the prices of the independents, please? Uh, Randy's backflow will charge uh, $75. 
Mr. Plummer, these are just random, 130, Marlin 120, A&Z Plumbing 175. Uh, we have another company, MRC Plumbing, which would do it for 55. Okay. Well, so. I had found, and they became a member of the chamber, they came to the um, chamber luncheons, A1 Fire, and I'm not promoting them, but they were going to do it for $55 right. and then charge $20 because Aquaflow was charging us $20. Correct. So we do have lower prices. The question is, if we did it in-house, and Mr. Galvin's question is correct, I thought we had 500 second meters. No. It appears we now have 1,000. And, so and let me clarify one thing. A lot of the devices over the last three years have been stolen. Um, nice. I had, a, I had an, uh, actually a, an, an item that I brought before the council two years ago where 300 was stolen in one year. Um, that is when the burden was shifted. So, that's so let me explain. I, I'm, Councilman, I'm trying to explain. We've got a lot on this agenda still. I know. I, you know we're, I, I don't want to talk I, about the yeah, two years ago. That's okay. not my question. My question. We have, as it is right now, uh, we have picked up in our system 3,000 backflows in our system. Whether it's commercial, <coughs> residential, it's 3,000 in the system. I can vouch for that number. Okay. So when we have 1,000 residential and we charge 75, that's 75,000. Um, dollars. Yeah, if we have, one if um, you have about 265 work days, a thousand. That's four a day. Can we not hire somebody for fifty thousand to do these inspections, or hire two part-time people to do these inspections and still come down on the cost somewhat? Maybe do it fifty. Uh, I'll answer that ca question, Councilwoman. No, the price that we're providing is seventy-five dollars. That's what we have to do. The, can we do it in-house? We can do it in-house. And it still will cost $75? $75. Okay. Yes. Then, then right. I'm ready to vote because I thank you. I don't want the burden to be on the, city, um, on the citizens to have to get a letter every year and go out and find a contractor. So thank you for doing this. If that's the best price you can do, I'm good with that. Thank right. you. And, and one item to keep in mind is an FDEP requirement. As a utility, we must provide the inspection annually. Whether we do it or a private company do it. May I Thank ask you. One last question, please. <laughs> what, Madam Mayor, just three of the staff, <laughs> was consideration given to bidding all three thousand meters and asking <laughs> plumbers to put forward an actual bid as opposed to just calling and asking for a random price? Go through the actual formal bid process. You, winner of this bid process, will get the contract to inspect all 3,000 meters. Did we ever look at doing that? Yes. Okay. The issue was, Councilman, again, as Councilman Biennale stated, when we were going to do that, the cry was, <coughs> why are we going to have, why can't we do it in-house? No, 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 because what we were doing and what we had gone down the path of was just getting a roster of about 20 different plumbers and, ta and sending a letter, well, Aqua Backflow was sending the letter on our stationery, right. sending a letter saying, you have to get this inspection now, choose any of these 20. Yeah. And people were just cherry picking out of that list of 20 and calling and getting theirs. That's why some yeah. people paid 75, sure. some people paid 105, et cetera. But what if we bid all 3,000 meters in the city as one giant unit to all of these plumbers, let them put forward a bid, <coughs> and they'll be slashing at each other to, to, to beat that price. You know what I mean? Like it's sure. Th that logically, I think well, the residents sort of suggested that. That logically sounds like a good way to maybe get a better price by shopping every meter at one time. There are three components, inspection, certification. If it does not pass certification, the city does not have anybody internally to repair backflow devices. That's not what we do. That's something that is at the responsibility of the owner of that backflow to get it repaired in such a way that it passes inspection and certification. So what we can do as a city, we can do the inspection and the certification that would make residents don't have to worry about calling anybody is what staff is recommending. Right. So we would do the inspection, we would do the certification, and then th because we're doing the ins inspection and certification, now we can maintain the record. <coughs> and then that record will go to FDEP. 
what you had before. We I, have I totally understand this, okay. but what I'm saying is, and I'm just going to say this Can one last time, it? I'm no. shutting the heck up. Yes, it's we should bid all 3,000 as one contract, let everybody in town put in their bid, select the best rated bidder like we do with any other construction project or anything else. That way, whomever wins does what we're talking about doing, except they'll do it for cheaper, and we won't be incurring the, 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 the cost of four new full-time staff members. That's my I have a question. But again, but again. I have a question. No, no. What about is, it, Mr. Bien-Aimé, hold on, please. Hold on, Mr. bien um, <laughs> What you going to do if, who's going to pay the bill if a backflow device is broken or re requires repairs? You, could, you could obviously bill the owner on an individual basis. The, the, winner, the winning bid company, I'll call them Plumber X, Plumber X could just do everything, and if there's somebody that fails and it has to be replaced, it has to whatever, that cost can then be passed along to the individual homeowner. But for the vast majority of people who don't have any problem, I bet bidding all 3,000, that kind of bulk, is going to get a better price from some plumber out there somewhere. But when you call, when you call Mr. Manager, when you call you of the plumbing companies, you, you told them how many backflow devices we had? Uh, Mr. Ghani can prove provide to you. One of the things we, we do when we do stuff like this is we look at what other cities have done and we look at other cities who have contracts with plumbers and they do it outside in-house. We have found that the cost to, to do this and bid it out is going to be higher. What you're going to have is more people coming in and they're going to say, why, why couldn't we have they're not going to, number one, here's, the, here's the, my issue. you got a company, we're going to bid this out. And here's what's going to happen. So company <coughs> ABC gets it. Now ABC is going to do the inspection and certification. And then if there's something wrong, they're going to repair it. Now we're going to have people come in and say, of course this company says that there's something wrong with my Sit down, so we, 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 there's no more citizen forum on this. Please they're, sit. They're going to say, of course this company says that I didn't pass inspection because now they're forcing me to repair it. So that's the other issue you're going to have. So what staff is recommending, simply let us do the inspection and certification. We will provide a list from Miami-Dade County. They've already gone through this RFP process. Because if we, uh, Councilman, respectfully, if we do what you want us to do, if that recommendation is the route, what's to prevent the company or someone having been suspicious and saying, yeah, this company is saying that I didn't pass because they now want me to, they want to do the repairs. That same conspiracy theorist will say it about us. Whenever somebody gets hit with a charge they're not expecting or don't like, they're going to immediately be suspicious. Well, Mr. But whether Manager, we're telling I think them that or it's another company, they're still going to be suspicious. Mr. Manager, I, I, I agree with Mr. Galvin. That's enough. Put it out for bid. Let them have the company that bid the least. And we close the chapter. Whatever it, whatever it is, they're going to eat it. That is correct. Let's, whatever let's, it is, they're going to eat it. But we if they Mr. charge Mr. more, Mr. they're Clark. still going to accept it. Uh, I made a motion. I make a motion. You want to make the motion? We, we have a motion. I, yeah. I never said anything. Can I say something? Um, it, we have a motion. No, no. We need Don't to move on. Anything. No, we need to move All right, on. All right, Mayor. Yeah, we Mr. Have Mr. I have, we have I, just for the record. We have a mo no, we have a motion for that tab. We have a motion. I believe that Mr. Galvin come with a good idea, okay. yeah. which I'm going to second, and I'm hoping that it will pass. Okay, so what Mayor, do I do? know that's what we did originally. Original. <laughs> Sir. Okay. They want that again. Okay. Okay, so I have a motion in a second. Do I, are we going to vote to dismiss that or are we just going to make this fail? What do you want me to do, Mayor? How, how do I proceed? What is we the have motion a, exactly? We have a motion from Sterin, <coughs> seconded by Councilwoman, um, by Councilman Bienname to, um, for I, Tabio. I, you know what? It's 11. Kill that I one. Move Kill my, my, my okay, so my motion. motion. Mr. Galvin, I'll, make I'll now make a motion that we bid the, uh, backflow services to the best qualified. And I second. Whatever it is. Roll call, sir. One second, Mayor. Yeah. Whatever it is. So are we not voting on this resolution? We're about to vote on it now. We're about to vote on it right now. Roll call, sir. Okay, we have a motion made by Councilman Galvin, seconded by um, Lucy, uh, Mayor Thundro. Just to be clear, this motion is to send this item out for bid. That's yeah. the motion. Yes. And I'm going to have a roll call vote right now. 
Vice Mayor Galvin. Yes. Mayor Thundro. Yes. Councilman Bienname. Yes. Councilwoman Keys. Yes. Councilwoman Stallion. No, they didn't let me speak. Okay. <laughs> Item pass 4-1. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Clerk, let's move on, please. Okay. So now tap V, discussion regarding base charge on second meter. Okay. Um, before we do that, can we ask, may that? I please ask council? We need discussion to, on what? if we can, if we can, if we can go, um, because this is going to be a lengthy discussion, because I want every single person here to speak about it. Which one? V. Um, v as in Victor. Yes. Can we quickly go on W and Y? V. Quickly. I don't think that will take any, right. any, <coughs> any, any Tap. long. Yes. Tab W, discussion regarding. Start with Y and you go up. Okay. So, okay. Tab Y, discussion regarding 2014 Mardi Gras. Public hearing is open. Um, citizen forum is open. That's Public a discussion. Hearing. That's a discussion. So let's go. What is it? An update? Yes, I, I can provide an update. Mm -hmm. um, the contractor, uh, <coughs> Mr. Ringo Kayard and his son, um, is in the process of being compliant, as you had directed, to come back and provide a list of sponsors. One of the app in the application process for reserving one, uh, Biscayne Bo Boulevard requires that uh, FDOT is requiring uh, that North Miami Beach <coughs> um, also approve it or be a part of the co-applicant. On the 19th of this month, they are appearing be with uh, the North Miami Beach Council to get support. Um, and moving forward, he will then continue to uh, come back before this council and provide <coughs> an update of all of his vendors. Uh, securing the road is very crucial um, uh, in the application process for the road. He did <coughs> submit a letter of support from WastePro, which I provided to you, and he is uh, continuing to get in that process. So at Mr. Kayard's uh, request oh, is to um, uh, continue this until uh, December the 10th. That's another month. Yes. Why is Mr. Kai I'm sorry, Madam Mayor, may I ask a question? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Why is Mr. Kayard not here tonight? Um, I'm not for sure. Uh, he did give a letter, which I did provide. Uh, mm -hmm. He had nothing more to add than to indicate that he has to go before North Miami Beach. He needs to get their support. And what is he going to be asking for from North Miami Beach? Is he asking for cash? Is he asking for their logo to use on some flyers? Mm -hmm. um, like, what, it, what, would, what are they being asked for? Uh, Mr. Kayard's main objective is to get their support to ask for uh, their consent and their blessings to uh, be a co-applicant to close the road on Biscayne Boulevard. Uh, in addition to that, uh, Mr. Kayard will be reaching out to North Miami Beach uh, to explore any other possible uh, partnerships that they may want to do. Uh, but his main ob objective is for the road. I, I'm just, I'm uncomfortable because <coughs> A, Mr. Kayard's not here tonight. B, going to North Miami Beach to ask for their name on an application. If, okay, how many more sponsorships have been secured since the last meeting? Two. So we now have a total of four? No, we only have two. <laughs> okay, but he, 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 he told us two, three weeks ago that we had two. He mentioned Waste Pro and he, I think he mentioned a gas station. Um, he did not have the letter. He has secured that letter and he has secured the letter from Waste Pro uh, before his comments were that he has Waste Pro, but he had no letter from Waste Pro or the second company. Okay. Uh, my understanding is today that he has those letters of support. He also has a uh, a commitment. Uh, we're waiting for it in writing from FIU to, uh, for a parking opportunity. So they would 
uh, let us use their field like they do on the 4th of July. Um, all the parking that we do there, except there will be a charge uh, for that parking. Um, so that's where he's at now. He's in the process of speaking to other supporters, sponsors, <coughs> but the major component was the application to secure that road. Getting North Miami Beach on board uh, because it impacts their city is very crucial in the minds of FDOT. Mm. Mr. Mr. Manager, um, Councilman Vice Mayor Galvin have made it very clear that for the next council meeting, for uh, Coyard's consulting firm to come back with a letter from RESPRO giving the amount in dollars of their sponsorship and a letter from the gas station showing the contribution that is going to provide for this Mardi Gras, how much it represents in terms of dollars. Um, not only Mr. Kayar didn't find it important to come back and give us an update. Um, we got a letter here from West Pro that says this letter will confirm our commitment to you and the city of North Miami for trash collection, special event boxes, and street sweeper for the community event called Mardi Gras. We will work with your public works department to coordinate our efforts and deliver the event boxes for the event. Should you have any questions, please feel free to call me or Gerlin Esker Mangos, 786-486-7554. Mr. I'm, I'm not sure, we, we, I don't know, maybe the directions you gave last time that we all voted on were not clear enough. Because right now I'm not having anything that we have asked for, first, and secondly, we, we're still back to square one. Uh, did you pay Mr. Coyo for this month? The $7,000 that he gets every month? Uh, for this month, no, not as of yet. Um, the I second issue that was raised as well was that the event was not being held in the city of North Miami. It was mostly in unincorporated date. And from, I am in, from what I'm understanding from the West Pro, they're, wor they're expecting our public works department to work with them on this. So which will um, convert in how much money if the, our department will work on this thing here? Well, uh, Waste Pro is quite aware that uh, we don't have the staff to do the cleanup. Well, it so says in the letter that sure. they are going to, and there is a number. Did you talk to Mr. Gerlin Escar Mengos? That, that letter uh, was provided to me um, about 20 minutes before, 10 minutes before the CRA meeting. So I have not had an opportunity to follow up on that uh, to find out what uh, what does that interpret? I, I will uh, follow up to find out what that interprets. Mayor, but yeah, yeah uh, hold on. Uh, Vice Mayor was going to add something. You were going no, to add uh, something. For now, I'll defer to hear the councilwoman. I'm, I'm just okay. very, very unhappy with two weeks, three weeks later that we really have no progress on this and, and Mr. Kiyard's not even in the room tonight. Like, that just blows my mind. Mine, too. But I'm sorry, so Councilman Sterling. Mine, three. Hmm? Go ahead, ma'am. Mind four. Mind four. I would, uh, um, I mean, give direction to staff to bring that back next council meeting because it does not worth it to discuss something that the applicant is not even here and we're forcing him to answer this question that the applicant should be, uh, not the applicant, Mr. Kayard and Mr. associates Mrs. should Mrs. be. Mrs. Councilwoman, Mr. Kayard had not, had not, not excused himself. He just not showed up with giving you a letter 20 minutes before board meeting starts that showed the amount of respect that we're getting here. And I don't see why we should defer anything for any next time because he, they were given two weeks to bring two letters because they have said that they had secured those two sponsors 
and Councilman Galvin has expressively asked them to bring what those sponsorship represent in dollar amounts. And today, not only that we have not gotten anything, this is a broad letter, and then in, in, uh, implying that our public works will get involved in this, which means West Pro just said, we're going to sweep it, but you guys pick up the garbage. Who's going to do it? From what I'm hearing, and, 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 and uh, anyway, to me, I have said it, that Mardi Gras thing is not my cup of tea, and I'm repeating it. The city is not, does not need a Mardi Gras right now. We won't need one until we, need, we have a closed circuit, because if anybody's head breaks down, because those Mardi Gras are violent, that's why I wanted you to go and see for yourself how it's done. Look at Brazil every year, the Caribbean, Haiti, what's happened in Mardi Gras. Is this something that the city of North Miami wants to afford? It is something that it is this something that we can afford right now. It is something that we need in the city of North Miami at this point of time when we're talking about capital improvement. So to me, whichever paper they bring, my vote will be no. I don't care what paper they bring because this is not a priority for me as a mayor or for this city that needs to go forward. Madam Mayor, if the applicant had been here tonight, I wanted to talk about scaling the event back to making it something more manageable instead of a big old Biscayne Boulevard street party. Maybe move it into the FIU Stadium and make it more of a concert carnival and then expand next year after we get a little bit under our belt. I'm very uncomfortable with where we stand essentially heading into the holidays with this event then being in March, wasn't it? Or is it April? April. Early April. I mean, we're going to come out of the holidays with f three, and three months to go, and we don't have any spot. We have two sponsorships, and one of those sponsorships is apparently a letter that just says we'll send a street sweeper and some garbage cans. It, it doesn't say anything like cash or, or anything else. Uh, and, and the applicant's just not here. I, I just, who handed you this letter tonight? Uh, Mr. Kayart. So he was here to be able to give you the letter, but then didn't stick around for. Uh, I, I'd like us. He would sue North Miami Beach Council meeting. Hmm? Yeah. No, they don't meet no? tonight. Ah, oh, come on. Yeah, Help they don't me. Meet. <laughs> um. no. well, Madam City Attorney, if we <laughs> move to terminate tonight, what are our contractual obligations? <laughs> uh, you have to give him fifteen written day, fifteen days notice uh, in a letter, and he keeps all of the monies that you've paid. What do you mean he keeps? All the money we paid him so far. He All the money we paid him. Ninety thousand dollars. Ninety-two thousand dollars that we've paid, but the work was not done. Well, what do we have to show for ninety-two thousand dollars later? I mean, just you know, let's be logic. It's not being angry at somebody or anything. I, mean, um, I don't have any problem if we have a contract with someone. <laughs> a contract is an agreement, an understanding. You do this, and I give you that. Well, we have not gotten anything for $92,000. So if um, uh, Vice Mayor Galvin suggests that he should move to terminate the contract, I think that the big portion of the money should be returned to the city because nothing was made. Okay. We can certainly issue a, a letter of breach and try to recover the funds. But I, it would probably require some sort of legal action. Well... We have no problem with legal action because the contract was very specific. And I'm sure if I was to ask the city manager to bring me all the monthly progress report that he wouldn't find any. I, I, I'd like to make a motion to terminate based on the terms of the contract. I'd certainly be open if you want to do a little legal look into to come back to us at the next meeting and give a report on what it would take legally to go after money, so to speak. You would ha we would have to file a lawsuit for breach of contract. Right. And, could, that wouldn't be and wait. then you have to recover the money. Which right, assuming he still has the money or it's not been spent on other <laughs> things. So. But well, I know. wasn't saying that to be facetious, so folks, please don't laugh. Um, I, 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 I'm going to move to terminate under the terms of the contract, that's my motion. What is the term of the contract? That we give you them. give him 15 days written notice yeah, to terminate. Is it the contract stated as well what he was supposed to do yes. while he was um, getting paid? Because from what I understand, the report that 
when we were doing the contract, the, that contract was very loose. We pay him ten thousand dollars of the fifty thousand dollars deposit in seven thousand a month. All he was supposed to do is go out there and um, talk to the Brazil and talk to the um, who to find floats or to actually uh, um, talk to people regarding sponsorship, finding the route. Which, believe it or not, he probably not being successful doing it, but he has been doing it. So we have to take this into consideration. I'm not advocating to continue the Mardi Gras. I'm not a Mardi Gras person, but I'm just saying that. Unfortunately, Madam Mayor, you were not here at that time. It was election time, but I was not running. But a lot of people come and advocates for it, and we up here, actually, not you, voted for it, and we knew it was very loose. So right now, yes, shame on me. Don't say it. I say it for you. But we did vote for it, and we knew it was loose. So right now, standing up here, sitting up here, would I support the Mardi Gras? Maybe not, because it's not working. But would I support to actually go back and sue him for the money? We will be a bunch of hypocrites without, I mean, not you two, because I know a lot of people come during the election time, advocate for this Mardi Gras. So right now, and we voted for it, we, knowing that that was very loose. So don't do that right now. Uh, again, I did vote for it, and I said then, I'm giving you six months, Mr. Kayard. You're pledging to me you can do this, but if in six months you don't have some set substantive progress, I'll be the first one to make the motion. To Good, rescind. but That's not to take the money back because we knew the money my, we were paying motion, him was to work. My motion right now is simply to terminate under the terms of the contract. Fine. And that the city attorney has 15 days to give us next council meeting to give us the legal routes to know whether or not we, because I know one of the entities that is going to be blamed for this is the police department that have been so difficult working with them. Chief is saying, no, can you come, come uh, forward, we Chief? Don't, we, we already come forward know. a second, Chief. No, let's just move on. Let's just take move the decision it. if you want to. We already know what's going on. Don't put nobody on the spot. No, because I know that uh, one but of the problems that know. I've so heard last know. time was, I'm just trying to close all angles, all right? Because they were saying that they have had difficulty with the police department who did not allow them to do this and did not allow them to do that. Mr. Um, Chief Ilias, quickly, can if you can walk a little bit faster because we're getting late. Thank you. All right, no problem. Um, Mayor, I, I have members of the staff that's here because we had put a, a committee together to work with them. At the beginning, I believe in March, we had done 125th Street. Okay, we had looked at... I uh, Major Shen is there, and the Assistant Chief is, is back there as well. His concern at 125th Street was that um, the, um, uh, exactly, yeah, that uh, when, um, uh, for example, the bands were going, okay, um, that was going to create a problem. So he said 125th wasn't good. We, we routed it out. We told him how many officers and so forth. He came about two weeks after, said it, it wouldn't work for him. Then we gave them three options, 135th Street, Trevor. We sat down and spoke with the carers on several, several occasions. The police department provided them other options. We provided them 135th Street um, from 6th Avenue up to 143rd Street. He favored that option. We also discussed in the area of Sunny Isles Boulevard, running from Biscayne into Olita State Park, and ending, uh, ending in Olita State Park, which would only allow for a partial road closure and in a more controlled environment. He, at that particular time, we also talked the west side, using Opalaka Boulevard and ending in Pepper Park. Uh, that was not favorable to the, the K-Yards. The what? My district, he didn't like it? <gasps> Let's go. Let's vote. <laughs> I have the minutes. <laughs> so, with a team of about eight members of our committee that we put together for the Mardi Gras, uh, he went out on location several times, and we actually had a route. We had a, a map of a route. It wasn't approved by FDOT at the time. Um, the main concern with that route was the logistics of the direction of the roadway from 135th Street 
running up on a dia diagonal northbound, there's a lot of cross intersections. And for detour routes, there was going to be an increase of law enforcement personnel. Hmm. When we discuss the number of possible, and when we say possible, we never received an, an MOT from Mr. Kayard or. Is that MOT is? What is an MOT? It's a, I'm sorry, it's a maintenance of traffic. And, what, and also a site plan. Um, number of who the entertainers are, number of alcohol vendors, all these variables will impede either deduct or add law enforcement officers. <coughs> He never provided that information. But with the minimum information we had with just that route, we knew the law enforcement personnel were going to be more on that, on that 135 to Dixie Highway because of the number of crossroads and to, for the detour routes. Uh, we've had many conversations with our committee. He wanted to know how we rec reduce that cost, and that's when we introduced the route on Sunny Isles Boulevard ending in Alita State Park. There's less cross intersections. It would end in a more controlled environment. Uh, he went out and looked at it, and he came back to a meeting, and he said that um, the city of North Miami Beach didn't want to didn't want it because of the residents, the residents and specifically the residents in the area. And he specifically said the residents of Eastern Shores. Mm -hmm. uh, there was some further discussion, and he came back, and uh, we were told that we were going to look at the route from 151 Street on Biscayne Boulevard to 163rd Street and also utilizing our stadium. We had some concerns because of jurisdiction. We knew we had to work with North Miami Beach. The most recent thing that we did, we had a pre-application meeting with FDOT that we sent Commander Dominguez, we sent Sergeant McNally, and we sent John O'Brien. Um, KRs were invited to go and they were encouraged to go. They did not attend that meeting. Uh, at that meeting, what FDOT had told us is that not only would that the city of North Miami has to apply for the road closure, North Miami needs to apply for road closure. North Miami Beach. North Miami, North Miami, Beach. North Miami Beach does. Both cities have to apply for the road closures. There would also have to be a study done, a traffic study done, before we actually apply that the KRs were going to have to do. We provide that information. He did email us back uh, the fifth, I believe we received the email on the fifth that he did reach out to the company that we recommended to do the traffic study. Uh, prior to us applying or North Miami Beach applying, there would have to be a second pre application meeting with FDOT to review the information. Uh, what North Miami has done, we have invited the KRs to all of our committee meetings. We meet every Wednesday at 10 o'clock. But we have also met with outside agencies and resources that are going to be required to work with us in this event. This is a Super, super bowl size event. We've met with Miami-Dade Fire Rescue, Miami-Dade Corrections, Miami-Dade Special Events uh, Supervisors, the City of Miami Special Events Supervisors, Miami Beach, and Homeland Security. That's just a, a sample. Um, and the reason we met with them is to research and to discuss how they handle these type of operations and also to preliminary get their commitment to assist us with ours. Every one of them said they would be glad to help us out, whether in kind or allowing us to provide, uh, utilize some of their resources, such as light towers, sky towers. However, they cannot commit until they have a final MOT, specifically um, Miami-Dade Police Department with their uh, the fire department and corrections. We're going to need Miami-Dade Corrections to get on board on this. Uh, the police department has been working diligently on this. Uh, we've asked for information, and he's willing to work with us, but he's still we're still we're, we're not moving forward. We're not moving forward. Thank you. Thank you.